Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about my generator. So I've had this generator for a number of years now, and it has been great. It's been more or less of a standby generator. I haven't really used it out in the field a whole lot. Uh, I did purchase it for some more rural area construction jobs, but lately it's just been kind of sitting around. So the last time I used it was probably about a year ago. I did change the oil and it is fresh oil inside of here. It just hasn't been running. So the reason why I like this generator a whole lot, this is the Champion generator, and it's a dual fuel generator. So I can run it on gas, or I can also run it on propane. And I'm sure that I could buy some sort of kit that would transfer it to natural gas. If I had a hookup, let's say, from my barbecue or something, I could run it through this system. Now, when I purchased this, I didn't realize it, but if I had spent a couple hundred dollars more, I could have got the unit that had a remote start which would have been so much more nicer than having to actually, if I'm using this for RVing, leave the trailer, go out, turn it on, run the heat or whatever it is I need to, and then go out, turn it back off. Having the remote on off would have just been so much more practical. So on this unit, we have the dual fuel. We also have a trailer hookup. This is a TT30R plug-in. So I can hook directly up with a 30 amp to the trailer. Uh, we also have a couple of 15 amp receptacles and a 12 volt cigarette socket and parallel connection. If I had two of these generators, I can hook them up in parallel to do 240 and 120, which is pretty cool. Also, what I use in this generator is I use True Fuel. So, this is a pure fuel product, there's no additives in it. And what's great about it is it burns clean and it has a very long lifespan. So I believe in the can unopened, it's like 10 years that this would sit on a shelf good for. So this is all I use. You don't need to add any fuel stabilizer or anything. All I use is the true fuel. So the reason for this video is there's actually a vac truck. You can probably hear it moving around outside. He just stopped vacing, but there's a hydro vac truck outside and he's making a ton of noise out there. So I thought it'd be a great day to run my generator, get things lubricated on the inside. And also I'm gonna wire it up to my rich solar slash grow watt unit and run it as a grid tie. This is an inverter generator. It's not just your standard generator. So it's sort of like buying a modified sine wave inverter or a pure sine wave inverter. This just gives out cleaner energy and it has a better waveform. So your regular generator more or less is like a modified sine wave. And this is like a pure sine wave. It is a little bit more expensive, but overall it's a lot better for your electronics. It's gonna run everything and not damage anything. So I can actually hook this directly up to my grow watt and not have to use like one of those EG4 charge inverter uh, things they sell for dirty generators. I'm gonna hook this directly up to the rich solar, charge up my batteries. My battery bank hasn't been charged up to full for quite a while. I'm still waiting on the housing market to get a more rural house so that I can hook up solar arrays to it. So for now, they're just kind of sitting dormant. So I want to charge them up to full so they can all top balance and then discharge them a little bit and then leave them sitting dormant for a while longer. Now for the plug-in for the rich solar, I have the TT30 plug here that's going to go into the generator and I just have exposed wires on this side. So this is going to go directly into the input terminal block. The input terminal block is the one to the front and underneath you can see where the ground, neutral and live wire go. So I'm going to run this in and now with that cable connected, I'm going to zip tie the cable so that nobody can come along and yank it out on me. Now it's time to hook it up to the generator. Okay, so you could probably hear I got the generator going outside. That's another great thing about these generators, the inverter ones, is that they're a lot quieter than the regular generator. So, let's make my connection to grid. So you can see there we have grid, 123.2 volts and 60 hertz. We're almost taking 100 watts. So you can see there, it looks like we're ramping up on charging automatically let's go to our settings inverter settings and let's go 
So let's go utility first. Okay, so you can hear the uh, generator slowly ramping up. We have about 21, you can see under current, we have 21.5 amps going in. So let's actually double that. Let's go 44 amps in. Settings. Ah, let's go 40. And waiting for it to save. There we go, 40. Okay, it's gonna ramp back up again. I've never actually run the inverter at that high of a wattage. So it'll be interesting to hear it. Still going up. Oh, maximum current. Okay, I gotta change this too. So we're gonna hear that drop down for a second. Now I don't wanna go over 3000 watts. Now I'm just gonna get this up and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop it because the vac truck is gone now. I think he's gone for lunch. So I'm gonna wait for him to come back before I fire it back up again. I just wanna hit that higher wattage, see what happens. And also, uh, this is 10 gauge wire, so we're good for 30 amps AC. There's 2,000 watts. And look at that, we're charging 38.5 amps. I still got room to go, too. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the generator now. Okay, so you can hear the inverter still humming with the fans. So we actually were charging over 2000 watts for a little bit there. And you can see that the inverter generator works just perfect with the rich solar. Um, as soon as that vac truck comes back, I'm going to fire this back on and charge up my batteries more. Uh, just waiting for that vac truck to come back. And I'm getting a phone call. And the big loud truck is back from his lunch break. So, we are going to charge up from the generator. Okay, I'm plugged in. That truck is really loud. My generator is about to be really loud too. Okay, so we got grid power. Okay, and we're ramping up. I can't even hear my generator over that truck. Wow, okay, we're at 16, 1800. Wonder how my generator's gonna take this. I've never run it this high before. Okay, we are at 38.5 amps. And we are at about 2200. Just over 2220. So I think that's good. I'm gonna leave that there let my generator run and uh, I'm gonna fill up my battery I can hear the truck getting louder you can't even hear my generator over that truck so we're gonna let this run and I'll be back uh, later on maybe in an hour okay and the vac truck is gone so I've shut down the generator now if you look if we go over here to charts do the last hour I got almost an hour worth of charging so I didn't get up to 100%, but maybe I'll do the rest just off of the grid. I'll just wait for an off-peak time in order to save a bit of money. It's always good just to pull out your generator, run it for a few hours, uh, just to make sure everything's running good. Uh, now what I'll probably do is refuel the fuel with the true fuel, and then I'm also going to do a oil change on the, on the uh, generator. So yeah, everything worked out really well. Uh, I did notice I did ramp up my amps to like 50 amps, but my generator wouldn't go above like 2,222 in and around there for watts on the output for that one uh, 30 amp plug. So not sure why it wouldn't go any higher, but it's still great. It still did exactly what I wanted it to do. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I did do another video on a generator hookup, I just basically ran an outdoor receptacle 
and then an inside receptacle that I can plug stuff into. Uh, so check that video out. I'll leave it at the end here. I'll just leave it up here uh, so you can click on it. And as always, thank you very much for watching and bye.